Do you feel like you have to code switch? If you do or don't, how do you decide? What are the ways that you use your formidable knowledge base to inform how you show up in a given space? Um, Masha, can you help me out with code switch? Yeah, I think um, the general idea behind is kind of the way that people can kind of turn on or turn off like okay. their accent or their slang or, you know, things like that in different environments. That's what I thought. I didn't want, I didn't want to assume that. So thank you for, for, uh, for clearing that up. How do I, do I feel like I have a code switch? Um, yes, to be perfectly honest, absolutely. Um, I, I, I think that, um, Actually, I know for a fact that I have been been judged for, uh, great, okay, so that was the right definition. I know for a fact that I have been judged for things outside of, you know, my, um, my knowledge or uh, my ability. Um, so, yeah, I, I try not to give people an additional reason to, to try to judge me. You know, I'm from, I'm from Baltimore, so, you know, uh, there is a certain slang that I have. There is uh, a certain certain accent that I have um, that I did have to alter in order to, I think, um, try to not be judged, whether that's right or wrong. You know, I think it's something that we all have to do to a certain extent. Um, and it is a very good question, but uh, the answer to your question is, uh, is yes, unfortunately. All right, that looks like the end of the questions for Dr. Bryce. Um, thank you so incredibly much for um, what really has been a historic day. Um, and all of you guys have really knocked it out the park. And I've learned a lot just sitting here and listening to um, how amazing you guys are and the, the amount of knowledge you're able to share with us has been really spectacular um, today. La Sasha. Yeah. On behalf of the foundation, yeah. let me thank you for being there all day and being a fantastic moderator. Let me thank our four absolutely outstanding speakers, our audience. You guys were fantastic. You were there all day. And there's one more thing that we didn't say before. Angie was not just the last speaker of the day. She was organizing this from the beginning. She was the one twisting arms and getting speakers. So thank you very much, Angie. And, it was and an honor. You know, like Bruce said before, once you, you raise your hand for the foundation, it's a life uh, sentence. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm up for the challenge. So, good. So <laughs> I hope we made a stand today. This, we, we really wanted to come strong and support the Black, Black Life uh, Matters movement. And I think you guys did it. Uh, as Bruce said, this will not be the last one. Hopefully early next year we'll be organizing another one. So Angie don't go too far and the three of you don't go, or the four of you don't go too far either. And thank you again. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, good night everybody. Thanks, thanks to all of our speakers, you know, and we look forward to more of this type of uh, not only great science but some frank discussions as well i think we just scratched the surface tonight especially with that last question i think that's an important question and uh, we want to make sure that people feel free to ask questions like that mm -hmm. and hopefully no one will uh, uh you know be offended or because these are the kind of discussions that we need to have in addition I, to all the wonderful science. I actually think we, we could uh, ask the other panelists with how would they feel about that question. We got a few minutes? We yeah. got, we have some time. Yeah. So I saw Neil in there. I know he's got an answer. Come on back, Neil. Go ahead. You're muted. Well, he, he disappeared. Josh, do you want to answer that one? Uh, Neil is, I think, just about to. I'll go after him. Oh, there he is. Yeah, let me, uh, let me, can I just hit, hit a question again, just to make sure that I answer it correctly? Sure, so the question I believe was, do you feel like you have to code switch? Um, and if so, kind of what are the things that, um, <clears throat> to decide when to code switch um, when you're trying to present your knowledge base to different, um, in different environments, different peers? And Latasha, before we need 
let me answer. Will you please ex explain the question for me? Because I still don't sure. fully grasp it. Sure. So there's this idea that, um, so code switching, I think, is um, a term, and uh, I might not, I'm just kind of summarizing my perception of it, but it's a term where people can essentially speak one way in one environment with one particular set of, you know, one accent, one lexicon, one um, set of slang that they might use or terminology that they might use, and then literally switch the way that they speak in a different environment. So a different accent or a different set of slang or a different language um, and kind of go back and forth depending on which environment they're in. You know, I've, I've heard it expressed as how are you the only black person in a white room? And I think that might get to the heart of the matter. So Neil, I was gonna let you answer that. Um, well, well, good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, you, you have to code switch um, for a variety of reasons. For me, um, I try not to do it, but you know, in America, we know that there's certain areas we're not expected to be. Um, so we can't be comfortable. Um, we definitely can't talk with our relaxed uh, vernacular. Um, and we know it can be regional. Um, so we have to go with, you know, we always say sounding like you're on the news. Um, because if you talk uh, your normal way, it may get misconstrued as, you know, you know being uneducated, not being um, qualified to be where you are. Um, so typically during the day, um, you have to change the way you talk, the way you sound, um, for me, um, and also just how you even react. Um, because anything we say also as well can also, um, be misunderstood. Um, so it's code switching or one of the great American poets, uh, Lauren Hill used to call it wearing the mask. You know, you're going on, going to work and putting on your mask um, to be your work uh, personality um, versus, you know, mm. being your personality. So I often have to do it um, multiple times a day, uh, whether you're at work, whether you're in Whole Foods, um, you know, whether you, you, you know, you're at the uh, Regal Cinema, whether you're on a train. Um, so it's just part of, you know, living here in America. Neil, what, what can we do as the white people in the room to, uh, you know, to be more accepting, to put, you know, you more at ease? How do we address that problem from our, from our perspective? Uh, I'm, I'm actually put here on the spot. Now, that's a good question. Um, I guess that we can just, um, I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a good answer off the top of my head. I'll defer to one of the other speakers. I'm gonna let Tasha go because I spoke earlier. But I do. I yeah. You go. Um, I think that's really tough. I I also code switch, um, and I, I think that a lot of folks that um, I don't think it's there are aspects of it that are not unique to Black people. I know other folks that have strong Caribbean accents or Southern accents that they you know turn it on and off. Um, you know, when they're in certain environments, if they can, you know, some people put effort into it, some people don't, some people don't, um, some people find it more challenging than others and more um, excruciating, you know, really than others. Um, I think that it is, um, I mean, in terms of how, I think generally, being able to judge a person by the content of what they're saying is, you know, it's the goal, right? Like that's, I think, what we all should be aiming to do instead of, you know, painting this depiction that you have based on someone's accent or based on their ability to, you know, to vocalize. And I, I think that's also something that comes up for folks that, for example, may have um, English as a second language, you know, where they're translating in their head as they're speaking. And sometimes that can be misconstrued as well. Um, in terms of someone's, you know, judgment of their abilities or their knowledge. 
And so I think, you know, we're in a, we're in a really cool field where we have so many different types of people that we interact with on a regular basis. And we know that knowledge comes in a lot of different forms. And I think, um, I think we're actually kind of lucky in that sense that, you know, we have, we know that there are, you know, people that are the best in the world at what they do. And they might not, you know, sound like the person on the news, you know, on an American TV channel, right? Um, but we don't, you know, the rest of the world doesn't quite live in that type of uh, environment. Um, and so I think, you know, just being really open about what we consider to be intelligent um, is important. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough thing. I'm not sure maybe some other folks can kind of chime in with what their thoughts are. Make the comment. Um, Bruce, uh, I will address your question first because I just want to let you know that um, it is not just Caucasian people that may uh, address an African-American person as to the way that they speak. Um, I remember years ago coming back home from a, um, from a break from school, undergraduate school at Virginia State University, going back to Chesapeake, Virginia to go home for a break. And of course, you know, you end up seeing some of your friends from the old neighborhood that didn't go to college. So just me going to undergraduate um, school, of course, my daughter wants to stick her hand in here. Um, <laughs> I would come back, see some friends, just generally talking to them like I would always do. And I've actually had African-American friends um, actually tell me, oh, oh, you're, you're talking like you're white. So I'm like, what does that mean, talking like you're white? Um, first of all, Virginia State University is a predominantly black university. It's an historically black university. Uh, there weren't many uh, Caucasian people on campus at that time. Uh, so that was just really far off. Uh, these individuals, we actually went to the same high school, which was a predominantly white high school. Um, so it doesn't only come from one side of, of the yard per se. Um, I've had individuals that I've worked with very closely, even in my workplace. Um, listen to me describe a case or just sitting talking casually about uh, work and actually make a comment to say, wow, you really speak well. And of course, I, I don't have a very good poker face. <laughs> so I kind of looked at them like, well, wh 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 what were you expecting me to sound like? I'm not understanding what. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not understanding this. So these are things that we will tend to run into sometimes and you do have to stay in your professional lane with these types of situations okay um and uh sometimes you you might have to just pull people to the side sometimes you just have to give people uh, an opportunity and time to be able to get to know you better um and then some people just don't know good etiquette uh you know, there's some things that you, just some people don't have a filter. That, that did kind of offend me, but um, I think it just confused me more because I was trying to figure out how he expected me to speak. I mean, just looking at me, was I supposed to sound like something else? Or um, how many other African-American people have you met? And what did they, uh, Hello, everyone. Please say hello to Elena. She just has to say hello. Okay. Uh, please go over there. But yes, I mean, it is, a, it, it is a situation. There's always a time and place for everything. Okay. And right now we're in a professional um, setting. Um, we're here to take care of business. And we're not, you know, necessarily going to be sitting like we're at like a family reunion or you know, a, a, a cookout per se, sitting around the table with a couple of beers or something, okay? So it's a time and place for everything. And I think it's just a, a, a common etiquette that people need to practice in certain situations. So it's not only coming from certain ethnic backgrounds, it can come from every corner possible. Over there, please. Thank you. Talk to your room. 
I think one thing too, can I say this really quickly? Um, I, you know, we, myself and, and, and the other panelists, obviously, you know, we've, we've been in this career, we, we've done quite a bit, but I would urge everybody do not look at us as an exception. Um, so don't look at other, you know, black people and, you know, they're one thing, but then, you know, we're something else. I get that uh, fairly often. Bruce, we had an experience together where, you know, that subject was, was touched on. Um, and it's not, you know, I think just seeing, seeing everybody as who we are. That's, I mean, that, that's honestly, it sounds so simple. It is simple, but for some reason it has been very difficult, but uh, just, just, you know, we're not, we're not the exception. Agreed. Well, that question really stimulated some good uh, conversation. Oh, we needed that. Absolutely. And, uh, our chat just blew up. So, and all the panelists will be getting a copy of this chat as soon as we're done here. So, it blew up on that. A lot of people think that this is an important subject and probably worth time on its own, detached from all the wonderful science that we had today. So, we, we'll talk about that. Angie, you and I have some conversing to do about that and see if we maybe we'll come up with a separate program just to talk about these subjects in a little more detail. Absolutely. Um, but once again, I want to thank everybody, not only for the science today, but for your frankness and the time you took out of the time we've given you to do your lectures to address what we all consider is a very important issue right now. So, uh, and I hope that everybody out there got something out of this presentation beyond more than just the science, which was in itself fantastic. So I think, uh, I think we've done some good today and I wanna thank all y'all for, for sharing this day with me. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I had a ball, it was a wonderful day. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank okay. you all. Thank you all. Bye bye, good night, Elena. Bye. Say bye, Mr. Bruce. Say bye. <laughs> Thank you to you guys. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Bryce. Honestly, for pulling this together. This is great. This is proud. It's wonderful. Bruce, me, you and Paco should talk soon. We will. Okay. All right. Bye bye now. Sounds good. Bye, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.